Welcome back guys. We're here working on my 1981 Ferrari 308 with a case swap. And in this episode, we're gonna build a mock-up fuel cell because custom fuel cells cost a ton of money and I don't wanna buy one without being absolutely sure that what I design is gonna fit. So we're gonna take some measurements of this cavity while the engine is in place, figure out what kind of spatial constraints we gotta work with. We'll pull this engine out. We're gonna build a fake mock-up fuel cell to the dimensions that we wanna order and put the engine back in and make sure that this thing fits because the last thing I want is to spend thousands and thousands of dollars only to have this not work out. We've got a lot of plumbing we've got to work around and some tube work we've got to avoid, but I've got a good feeling about it. So let's pull this engine out and get started. The space in which we're gonna put this fuel cell is admittedly pretty big upon first impression. It's gonna sit right in front of the engine in this cavity between where the factory fuel cells sat. And honestly, I figured I'd have a lot of room for a lot of fuel tank here, and it should line up with the factory fuel receptacle pretty easily. In order to actually measure this thing, I climbed in and getting this shot was actually pretty difficult. I went to great lengths by holding the GoPro in my mouth because it wouldn't fit on top of my head while I was in the back of the car. For some base dimensions, I'm going with about 36 inches wide, which should clear the frame rails with room to spare, and about nine inches tall. And it looks like I should have about 10 inches of width to play with to give me some room without hitting the bell housing. The other important thing to note right this moment is that I need to leave space behind the fuel cell for these coolant pipes that run to the front of the car. So with those measurements, I'm gonna go on and remove the engine from the car once again. So for some napkin math, I wanted to figure out just how big my fuel cell might actually end up being, because fuel capacity is pretty important after all. With a 36 inch width, a 10 inch depth, and a nine inch height, that gives us approximately 3,240 cubic inches of volume. And in order to find out how many gallons that is, we divide it by 231, which equates to 14 0.025 gallons and I'm pretty happy with that figure for everyone everywhere else in the world that is 53.09 liters of fuel and that strikes a good balance between a low capacity to keep weight down while having enough fuel to go drive this thing around on the street so now we're on to actually building a mock-up fuel cell and I'm trying to keep this really simple and something I can get done quickly so I've decided to use some craft foam core board from an art supply store like what you made science projects out of in middle school. This stuff is about an eighth inch thick and I'm basically cutting out each side of our box and I'm going to use some sewing pins to hold the whole thing together, five on each side for anyone that actually cares. I did consider actually bending this up in aluminum but that's a waste of material and time and foam core is super cheap and easy to work with for projects like this. I've even used it for CAD part mock-ups for things like spoiler uprights in the past. finished mock-up cell sits well in the car. It's got room to spare between the frame rails and it's sitting just off of the bulkhead thanks to the former factory fuel tank strap mounts. There's room behind it for those coolant tubes, which is a good sign. Although once I got it in here, I did realize that there's enough room underneath it to pass those tubes under if I'm willing to redo them. And that seems like the right move. As you can see here, I'm losing a lot of space behind the cell that could hold more fuel. And as it turns out later, I'm gonna need it. So I'm gonna pull that eight foot aluminum coolant tube out and we'll rebuild it later in the process. Mm -hmm. 
changes that I'm gonna make to the mock-up cell are pretty simple. I'm gonna trim some off of the height so that it will fit under those gas tank strap mounts to sit up against the bulkhead. And then I'm gonna angle the back of it at a 15 degree incline so that it will match the bulkhead's angle. And that just so happens to coincide with a two inch delta between the upper face of the tank and the bottom face. It's nice when you're working with even round numbers like this. So I cut it all out and put it together so that we have a new mock-up cell that will fit against the bulkhead properly. This does, however, negatively affect our fuel capacity, dropping it down to about 11 and a half gallons. And honestly, I'm not so sure that's gonna work. It's technically enough for what I wanna do with the car, but I do like this concept of driving it on the street. And while I don't imagine I'll take it on any trips further than something like Los Angeles, I don't wanna find myself constantly looking for fuel, especially race fuel, which is what's gonna to have to go in this thing. The reduced height makes it fit under those factory fuel tank mounts perfectly, and it now fits like a glove. And it's clear that I can add some width to this thing to get some of the fuel capacity back, which I'm pretty happy with. And looking underneath it, there's also definitely going to be room for those coolant tubes, so I think we're in business. And at this point, I was feeling pretty good about everything. I spent some time looking at how the tank fit and decided it was probably time to go on and put the engine back in. My buddy Khalil has perfect timing and showed up to see what was going on this afternoon, just in time to lend a helping hand to get this engine mounted back in the car. And the whole process went smoothly. I'm happy to say all of the mounts lined up going back in, which is admittedly a bit of a relief. With the engine back in, we were able to take a step back and see what the clearance of the fuel tank looked like with everything actually in place. And at first, I was feeling even better. There's a ton of room between the tank and the engine and bell housing, transmission, things like that. And I thought, okay, I've got a lot of room to work with here. I could probably even add some overall depth to it towards the transmission to get some of that capacity back. But once I moved to the passenger side of the car, I realized I was overlooking a very important glaring error. And that's that there's an oil pump that needs to go right here in this gap. If you look at this blueprint for it, you can see where the oil pump sits in relation to the crank pulley, if you aren't familiar. And it's those oil fittings that I'm worried about. Doing some measurements, I can tell that these fittings at the end will only clear the fuel tank in its current dimensions by 0.1 inch, and that will not work. So it's a really good thing that we built this foam mock-up block because I very easily would have overlooked the fact that I do need to clear that dry sump pump. And this gives me a really good idea of how much room I actually need to clear it. When you look at numbers on paper, it's easy to overlook things. So we're gonna cut a few inches off the front of this fuel cell and we're gonna go up a few inches. And because we have a mock-up cell in here, we can tell exactly what we're gonna interfere with. And in this case, making those changes is gonna be nothing. And I feel really good about it. I think we're gonna wind up between 13 and 15 gallons of fuel capacity. We will draw it up in CAD and kind of get a final number. So let's take a look at that real quick. I took a moment to draw up the cell as it sits in the car, which is what we're seeing here, at least a rudimentary version of it. And the changes that I've decided to make is to cut three inches off of the front of the cell, and then to bring the top of the cell up three and one quarters of an inch. I can also account for the fact that I can add about two and a half inches to the overall width while keeping it between the chassis rails and not making it too difficult to get into the car. As far as what this does for the overall capacity of the fuel tank, I wasn't quite in line, but it will land at about 12 and a half gallons, and I think that's good enough. I should be able to get at least 200 miles out of a tank, worst case scenario. So this project's finished for the day. We are ready to send all of this information out, drawings and dimensions, to a fuel cell manufacturer and get something custom built for this car. Undoubtedly, it'll be a long turnaround, but once we get it back, we can then get moved on to plumbing a whole fuel system and be one step closer to making this car run.
I appreciate you guys watching as always. Feel free to leave me a comment, leave me some feedback, let me know what you thought of the episode. And of course, if you did like what you watched, subscribe. That stuff does a ton for me as a content creator and it helps this channel grow. I will catch you guys on Tuesday of next week with the next episode. We'll be back on the Ferrari as always. I will catch you guys then.